Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have Dr. Joe as my guest and I want to do a very special session today. You know, Dr. Joe went through, he got into a residency program but didn't finish completely yet get a clinical pharmacist job. So that's a really amazing story and I want you guys to hear from him personally. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to him to introduce himself and we'll get the show going. Hi, my name is Jimmy Doe and I've been a pharmacist for a little over six years. I uh, graduated uh, from the University of Houston College of Pharmacy back in 2012 and uh, started a residency program with um, Memorial Hermann Southwest right after graduation. Awesome. Well, that's amazing. So tell us more, um, when you got into the program, what was it like being a resident? So it was totally different scenario compared to rotations in pharmacy school because now I'm a licensed pharmacist. Anything that I do is on me because of my license. Um, and the expectation that is held is at a higher than as a pharmacy student. Um, of course, you still have the preceptors there to kind of fall back on, um, to ask questions or anything. But then you also have these longitudinal projects as well as any additional projects that are going on during that specific rotation. Was so, it what you, oh, go so it is a big learning curve. Big learning curve. And I was just going to ask, was it what you expect of residency? You, you know, you're heard through this residency by your preceptor. You probably see resident, but kind of like the reality version versus the uh, virtual, right? Like, was, did it meet your expectations? And if not, why not? Um, well, it, it, it exceeded my expectations. I don't know if my expectations were a little lower than, <laughs> you know, should be. Um, but the time commitment is very, very real in residency. You need to be able to, time management is the key to everything, uh, especially during residency program with the longitudinal projects, with certain other projects you have going on. Um, so it was very hard for me because, yeah, I went through rotations as a, as a pharmacy student. Um, yeah, I had little projects here and there, but working up patients, okay, no, no problem. But, you know, in this case, working up uh, patients and making recommendations directly to the doctor, um, you know, having that one-on-one, -on -one, it is very different. And preparing for um, the TSHP on call day presentations and mid-year poster presentations, it was, it was a lot. So most residents requires you do at least one project. It could be quality improvement or some would actually put you through like IRB process. So it's a very labor intensive and has to be not just like a week project, it's, you know, it could be a whole year project. So it just depends on the facility. Um, so what was the hardest thing for you? So you said, you know, time management, a lot of things juggling. So how did, so first of all, what's the hardest thing out of all that? And what was one thing that you did that you felt was successful? the one well so the one thing that i did that i feel was successful maybe in my eyes is that the learning opportunities that i had you know working on pro you know submitting for irb um, propo um you know proposal um that took a lot of time research that experience kind of you know helped me as well as um, working on projects um, learning about patient populations, you know, where I was at, I learned a lot about heart failure, um, heart attacks. Of course, um, I didn't get to finish the residency program as we kind of previously mentioned, um, but that's because I was very, I guess, meticulous, wanted to know the ins and outs of each patient. So, of course, for any given unit, there may be anywhere from 15 to 25 patients. I was working up maybe only five patients, but they were very complete five patients. Thorough. Yeah, yeah. very thorough where you, have, you can't just take care of these five patients, you have to take care of these 25 patients. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to, you know, kind of find out, prioritize what, does, you know, what things need to be addressed first and then follow up on the others. So I think that's kind of where I fell short is because I wasn't able to pick up the patient load that was expected of me during the residency program. 
And then um, what was the conversation like when they kind of sat down with you and say, hey, this is, quote, you're not wor- you know, working up to the expectation of the program. Like, what was that conversation look like? So it was, it was pretty difficult because one, we had this conversation on April the 1st, mm-hmm. which as we all know, April 1st is considered April Fool's Day. Mm-hmm. And April, meaning that, you know, I started in, I believe it was June or July. So I completed nine months of the residency program. Yeah. And then they let me go on April 1st. So, you know, my residency program director sat down with me, spoke with me and, you know, broke it down. And I was like, you know, I, I, I understand, you know, I, I recognize what you're telling me, but you don't think I will be able to improve in the the remaining three months that I have a residency program and my residency program director was like no we, we don't mm-hmm. and so you know it was very tough you know because one I'm married and this is my only you know although as a residency resident you get a stipend it's nothing compared to a, a f- actual pharmacist but it's something right. you it's know about half. Yeah, <laughs> a little ha- less than half is how <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Um, but it was some type of income to kind of supplement your learning at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it was very tough to break the news to my wife. Uh, but fortunately, during the the residency program, you know, each ro- residency pro- so each residency program is a little different. Uh, we ha- were required to staff. Uh, act as a staff pharmacist every third weekend so we would go in on the weekends and work as a staff pharmacist during that time you know I I, I performed well as a staff pharmacist and um, although I was let go of the residency program the the pharmacy director there at the time you know offered me a position as a PRN uh, staff pharmacist so I took that and you know during that after being let go of the residency program and working PRN as a staff pharmacist I kind of you know kept my clinical skills kept them up and would make clinical interventions during order verification and how did you keep those clinical skills up to par well again just reading up on literature primary literature guidelines um, it's it's important to keep up with the literature because the literature changes every day, especially with, I mean, right now we're going through this COVID um, pandemic and (laughs) it literature, literature changes literature literally every day. day. And so um, just, you know, you have to do your due diligence and do your own reading, teaching yourself. And, you know, again, just keeping up with the up to date. And how did it feel to go from a resident and stay on here in, in the same organization that you were let go? Like, what was your thought process, right? It's, I bet it's very emotionally vested and just difficult to, and then seeing your co-peer, I'm not sure if you had a yes, peer resident. So. Exactly. It, it, was, it was tough because in my head, you know, human nature, you know, you're let go and you're, you're working alongside with your co-residents. And then, you know, you can only imagine what's going through their mind, like, oh, he, he couldn't make the cut. He got let go. And now he's in this PRN staff pharmacist position. But you have to look past all that. You know, you have to focus on you. You're the only one that is driving your ship. No one else is driving your ship. And so you're responsible for your career. You're responsible for your um, professional development. And so... I didn't look at that, I just focused on the job at hand, um, excelling, going above and beyond what's expected during order verification, because you could just verify orders, you know, computer shows you drug, drug interactions, uh, you could say, okay, this is a low risk, yada, 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 but you need to look for, honestly, for every patient, there is some potential uh, intervention that you can make, you know, depends on how little or how big, but you can make those. Um, but it, it was tough, but just just focusing on myself, focusing on my work, and of course, you know, at the time I was just a PRN staff mm-hmm. position, so of course I wanted something full time. And then yeah. you're just being able to really keep your skills up, right? And one thing I really want to point out and really admire of your kind of mindset, right? You took it so strong and persevered. 
for some folks, they may just like, I'm like, go, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave this institution completely. But you held on and say, I'm gonna, even though I was let go as a resident, I'm gonna stay on as a staff or MSS and to build on my skills and having the opportunity. And, you know, there's, I bet there's a lot of a wonderful emotions, right, in terms that you went through that short period of time and being able to stay on and face individuals that tell you, no, you're not good enough to be a resident. But Especially your residency program director who's there. Right. So mm -hmm. I, but you took that, a lot of people could just consume this good, uh, um, of self-doubt and just swallowing up in that negativity, but you turn it around and make it a positive experience as best as you could. Mm -hmm. And one thing he said that I really want to point out to you guys that you can only control what you can control, right? So you control exactly. your story, you control your career, and disregard anything and not telling yourself story or, or having self-pity, right? Like mm -hmm. you control your own story, your career, and what you can do to drive that success. Exactly. Um, if you look at other like, oh, what would Anne think about me? Because now, I'm, you know, who, who cares? Exactly. Essentially. You yeah. have a family to take care of. You do you. And exactly. I think that's a really important message out there for those that may go through the similar process and just persevere. Exactly. So I want to transition to the next thing, which is, um, I know you're a parent, you have a family to support, you don't want to stay parent forever, mm -hmm. and I know you look into clinical pharmacist jobs, so walk me through that journey. So of course, you know, as I mentioned, I was PRNing, still, you know, again, kind of reiterating going above and beyond. And during that time, I was looking for opening positions at other hospitals. And I fortunately found one for an evening staff position, staff a pharmacist position, which, you know, I would like a daytime, but right now beggars can be choosers, I like, like to say. Um, so I applied, um, it was a full-time position, evening staff, pharmacist, evening meaning from three to about 11.30. So I applied and, and I got a phone call. Um, but before that, the pharmacy director at the hospital I was currently working at for PRM position, uh, he came up to me and said, Jimmy, I got a phone call from the pharmacy director at this hospital, and he asked me about you. And he said, I gave him two of these. Oh, nice. So I was like, oh, wow. Initially, I was like, oh, I meant to tell you that I applied. I just want to make sure that you're aware. Um, just because it's very important to, you know, when you're applying or something and you want to have, you know, you, you want good references. Absolutely. Of course, I put uh, my job experience on my resume, my CV. So as, um, you know, as any uh, good, you know, manager or director would do, you have to kind of do a background check, call these people. And so the resident or the pharmacy director at that hospital called the one that I was currently working at, gave good report because again, since he saw that I went above and beyond, you know, when you go above and beyond, who can say bad things about you? Absolutely. And that's such a one, we've been talking about networking, right? Like it's such a crucial, and it's just not necessarily networking, it's just the ability to build a relationship and show your, your worth. Um, I mean, Jimmy could very well be, okay, I'm just up here and I'm just going to do my day to day and call it done. But he took one step further and go above and beyond, really looking to the patient, provide clinical interventions, and then really helping out. Because when the opportunity arises, guess what? Pharmacy is such a small world. Like, you cannot imagine how small it is. I, I hear this all the time in pharmacy school. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but when you start residency, I mean, I know people that know people that know people, mm -hmm. and then in the end, it comes back to you. Um, so that's definitely an important part. So in this situation, you know, the, the pharmacy director there and the pharmacy director at where I was working at, they knew each other very well. Mm -hmm. So pretty much whatever this director said, you know, had good, um, you know, I'm missing the word, but um, relationship. yeah, relationship where this other pharmacy director could trust what they're saying. Okay, so what's next? So um, I got in, you know, starting staff pharmacists uh, during the interview um, time, you know, they, of course they're asking me about the residency program. Mm -hmm. Why was I let go mm -hmm. uh, sooner? And I, I, you know, I was honest. I let them know. Um, and of course, I had prepared a, a portfolio, you know, 
if you don't have a portfolio, I recommend putting together a, an actual portfolio because it goes a long way because uh, it speaks about you, it speaks to you. So for those that don't know what portfolio or what should be in there, can you kind of do a quick five seconds? Um, should be included so portfolio of course your cv any letter of recommendations that you have available any projects that you've done posters um, pretty much actual items that showcase or supplement what your cv says about you mm -hmm. great so yeah that's a pretty quick sum up so for those on rotation this is a great opportunity to just kind of list those out it can be electronic portfolio it doesn't have to be on paper so mm -hmm. start filing those away even for those in residency this is an opportunity for you to do it i know it's more structured and formalized so you do that for those that are not in residency or a student you know in terms of your work experience really sign up for projects and make a lock of all the projects that you've done um because again you are the one advocating for yourself and if you mm -hmm. don't no one will exactly be able to really show people what you have accomplished or the value added right so really really emphasize on that and so during the interview of course the interview was with the pharmacy director the clinical pharmacist and the uh, at that time it was an evening staff um, supervisor okay. and so of course again like I mentioned the question came about the residency program I was totally honest with them let them know also I had asked um, the operations manager at where I was PRNing at okay. for a letter of recommendation a, a great letter of recommendation yes. and so she was able to write that for me and of course I included that in the portfolio usually for letters of recommendation you're not supposed to see it but in this case you know it's something um, out of the ordinary I guess you can say um, but so the interview went well they offered me the position uh, I was uh, working as an evening staff pharmacist and so I started in May and of course you know once residency programs finish June July they're looking for jobs you know mm -hmm. hospital positions so I felt like I was fortunate to land this position and start in May which of course is before the residency programs finished which means there's less competition yes. so and usually depend on positions usually we would like to fill it unless we know there's a great candidate and we'll be willing to wait so it just depends but so Tommy was in your favor and people and everything kind of line up for you exactly so just to wrap this session up um, what three things that you felt that you did um, that help you to become successful in terms of getting that job despite um, the struggle in between I mean never never give up never give up if you if your heart is in it you know motivate self motivation goes a long way um, you know uh, also keep up to date you know you have to do your own learning because again you're the one driving your ship you have to advocate for yourself as you mentioned you have to sell yourself you know and the only way to do that is to kind of do extra extra ordinary not extraordinary but in a sense extraordinary because you're doing more than what's expected of you and again to kind of showcase yourself so um, again never giving up self you know teaching yourself kind of self building self motivation self professional like professional development yes professional development thanks for those words <laughs> and um networking as well networking you never pharmacy is a small world um you know and in my sense of networking was because i did the residency program in there of course i maintain good relationship with the director there the operations manager you know to where they could give a uh, good um feedback on my behalf yeah and one thing i just uh, close it out is in terms of networking really building relationship and when you finish pharmacy school like right we always involve pharmacy school all these different chapter when you're done you're like i'm done I'm, i mean i got into so you know actually finishing pharmacy school and become a pharmacist is just the first chapter of your life and continue exactly. to be involved and it could be within the local hospital and committees or it could be outside the four walls and be involved with the local state local state and national um, because the voice of the profession is only as good as you provide into it so even if you just have to pay your membership and be a member that's great because that revenue goes towards uh, an individual that will advocate for our profession so I'm very passionate about that and I think that's so so hugely important that everybody needs to be stay involved 
and um, and even like get on comedy number. I mean, it's like one hour a month. You can it, going back to that program management, like all when we all finish from pharmacy school and what we have life outside of pharmacy, right? Like mm -hmm. kids, family, whatnot. But there's so many opportunities that can give back and pay it forward. So with that, I will wrap it up. I appreciate you guys listening to on us and let us know if there anything that you felt was helpful. Tell me one thing that was helpful from this session and one thing that you have learned through the journey that you would be able to tell others. Until then, ciao. Ciao.